Hello America, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to my review of 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After Season 5 episode, I don't know. I'm here, I hope you don't hear the TV that's coming from the next apartment over. Hmm, I wonder who lives in that apartment. <laughs> Anyway, this light is blinding me. I know sometimes I go back and forth and sometimes these reviews are very late. Sometimes they're just kind of late. I feel the best if I review the other way and happily ever after on the same day, like drop both of the reviews on Tuesday because then that's just easier for me. Why are they stretching out this bullshit with Eric and Larissa? I don't care. I don't care. Guess who was at the door? Amazon. Amazon was at the door. Larissa goes back to Eric's house to give him the phone. Then they get into an argument, but she says that she's gonna stay there. And she calling him like a bitch and everything and like cheap. And he's like something. I don't care. I really don't care. I was so looking forward to Larissa coming back because she is the queen. I was so looking forward to her coming back, but now that she is back, I am very, I am very not pleased about it. Um, I don't, I don't know. Only thing I have to really just, you know, ask is how is she staying up in their place? Does she have money to pay? Like, does she pay a rent? Does she pay for the month of space because <sighs> why are they showing us bits and pieces of Karini? They show Karini and Paul. They show us so little of Paul and Karini that I forget that they're even on this show. Karini is still unhappy because Paul has not found a job. Karini does not li like living close to train tracks. And she says there are no train tracks near homes in Brazil. Paul then says, oh, but there's just gunshots and gun activity. I know that's not coming from the nigga with the criminal record. Out of y'all two, you got the criminal record. What are you trying to say? I'm, I'm very much confused. Like, people don't be hearing gunshots in America. Girl, what? The audacity. The audacity of these motherfucking Americans to sit here and talk about any place like America is the shining star of the fucking world. Cut it out. Cut it out immediately. Anyway, Karini says that she's going to give him two months. I guess she's given him a month already. Now she's going to give him an additional two months so he can get a job. This breaks Paul's heart because he doesn't want her to go back to Brazil. He wants them to live as a family. And he wish that he wishes that Karini would be more patient with him and you know see that he takes care of everything like the food. And also he says that he has to kick it in overdrive because he didn't know that she felt like this. You didn't know that she wanted you to have a job and not live in a one bedroom studio trailer next to train track. You didn't know that she had felt that way. Okay, moving on. Um, Tanya and Sinjin, I'm sick of it. Sid, uh, Tanya, why are you crying? Hmm? Why are you crying? Huh? Why are you crying? Why are you crying? Babe, you went up and you went back. Girl, you ain't even got on no seatbelt. She talking about she had PTSD and ain't even got on no seatbelt. Anyway, they go see Charlie. Charlie is her bro his brother. Charlie's knee, I can't remember what happened, but the knee resulted in a blood clot that could have killed him. So, Charlie and Sinjin are talking. Obviously, Sinjin talks about how it's sucky in America. Then Tanya got the nerve to be saying... He talks about America so bad, but it's not even that bad. I wish people would stop saying that. I really don't understand why people say that. Ain't she supposed to be a an activist? You know the 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 horrible the horrible underbelly of America, but yet you're sitting here talking about it's not that bad. 
Oh, okay. Anyway, so after uh, Sinjin says all of this, his brother is not concerned, just like his mother and his sister are now concerned. So, um, what's his name? Sinjin is going to go out for a day on day out on the town with his brother and his friends, and Tanya is gonna go with the mother and the sister. Do they go to counseling? Do they go to like marriage counseling? Because I don't get it. They were asking Tanya questions. She was like, yeah, I just don't feel like sometimes, you know, like he's like grounded and I don't know if he wants to like actually like settle down and actually build a family, you know, and I love him and I want to be with him and she's starting to cry and all of this. And it's like, you telling your business to more people who ain't got nothing to offer. Why don't you tell your business to people who have something to offer? I really just don't understand it. The mother is like, you want to change him? She's like, no, I don't want to change him. Like, I want him to have his fun. Like, you know, but I also want us to be serious. I, want us to be... I just, it's not that Tanya per se gets on my nerves, just her. It's that Tanya and Sinjin are not my cup of tea. I was like, ooh, this will be fun. And now I'm looking at it and I'm like, ooh, no, this is not what I wanted to see at all in life. Girl, it looks like my, my light don't even matter no more. Oh, there we go. The mother says in her confessional, I don't know if she said this to Tanya, 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 whatever the hell her, her name is. But she was like, Tanya mustn't be too demanding or else, you know, he'll go because he's a free spirit. Well, I mean, didn't Sinjin know he was a free spirit when he was, you know, like, dating Tanya? Like, it's really weird. I'm pretty sure you've seen her personality before y'all got married. Y'all, neither one of y'all was like, hmm, maybe this will be a clash. Like, uh, moving on. <laughs> Um, this is gonna be really quick. I don't give a fuck about Michael. Okay? You know, sometimes I'm like, Michael Michael deserved to come to America. My Michael do deserve to come to America. He's put up with a lot. But at the same time, he's put up with everything that he's wanted to put up with. No person is going to come into my culture, want to marry me, and then tell me I'm so sick and tired of hearing about this culture anyway. Angela the manipulator. I don't even know if she's a manipulator. It's just Angela the Angela has sat up here smoking her cigarettes, talking about, you know, she need to get healthy, she gotta lose weight. It's a whole lot of other things that go into having a baby, Michael. And so he's like, okay, you know, whatever, I'll stay with you if you don't have a baby. I said, weakest link number one. Then he's like, but what about my family? My mother, she may not approve of the wedding because we are not going to have a baby or we may not have a baby. And she's like, what that got to do with us? This is our relationship. Girl, and, and at that moment, it's like, Michael should have called up his sister, his auntie, somebody, to when they brought that back, that boat back to shore, they would have beat Angela's ass. They would have jumped her. There is no way you're going to sit up here and talk about my culture, talk about it don't matter what your mama want. I'm so sick of hearing about that culture. You need to tell him. Sometimes your culture go against what you want as a man. Oh, for real? Sometimes. But who the fuck are you to tell me that? Who are you to tell me sometimes? Then they go eat the cake. She over here having orgasms. Oh, no. Why they bring her that big ass thing? I've never seen it. Well, I've never tasted cakes for a while. Oh, maybe. She tasting that cake. The auntie and the cousin. I don't know who that lady was. I honestly don't know who that lady was. Because she really didn't say much. So, I guess they're going to have a traditional wedding because his family help, agreed to help pay for it because they were like it's just so much for us to do but I don't know if they're having a traditional Nigerian wedding 
or if they're just gonna help them pay for the wedding and Angela is still gonna wear her wedding dress because she said that she wasn't gonna budge on that but also you said you weren't gonna budge on getting married in Nigeria and you did that so anyway they tell the aunt and the cousin I'm gonna just say cousin that you know I'm old Angela says I'm old and you know it may be harder and there's some more pronounced risks to me having a baby and so the auntie is like okay we won't you know be 100% happy with that but we don't matter you have to ask Michael's mother is she going to still be okay with the union then Angela looks at Michael and says Michael seriously if your mother says that we can't get married what's gonna happen What do you expect Michael to say? What do you expect Michael to say? I will talk to her. I will talk to her for you. Don't worry, baby. Come on. Come on. It's this is so dumb. And I'm not gonna sit up here and say that Michael, Michael, Angela is rolling over Michael. Michael is a grown ass man. If you want to have a baby, you've always wanted to have a baby, this is something that you want to do, then why haven't you told her that? So if Michael, you know, is happy with something that he really wants to do, being pushed to the side and maybe, you know, not doing it, then that's on him, not me. I'm going to do what I want to do in my life. Michael gonna be doing more than the BJ if he come over to America and she can't have no baby and they don't get a surrogate he gonna be doing more than the BJ and she talking about I ain't dealing with no side chicks girl that would be a baby mama that wouldn't be a side chick that'd be a baby mama anyway Chuck and Charlie what the hell Chuck and Charlie Chuck Charlie Andre Elizabeth, his brother, his friend. What the hell is going on? I'm. We all know it was not a, what you said? It was not that. So I'm not even going to go through the fight. They looking at each other. You want to go, bro? Huh? Huh, bro? You want to go, bro? Huh? This is, we come from America, bro. Where we do what the fuck we want and say what the fuck we want. Huh? What, bro? What? Huh? Why? Ch Charlie said that. Then two seconds later, Chuck said, We come from America where we treat our guests with respect. Okay. Anyway, what the hell is wrong? Was Andre just drunk or what? Because Elizabeth is like, Okay, come on, let's go. So they go. Then he's like, I'm about to go up in there and fuck your brother up. So he goes back in there. It wasn't a wop wop. Because if it was a wop wop, I would have been happy with it. Also, did Andre forget that Chuck is paying for the wedding? Is this manufactured TV drama of Chuck paying for the wedding? Because there's no way this man was was telling me to go back to America. I take I go back to America and take my American dollars with me. What are you talking about? There is no there is absolutely no way that he's sitting up here saying go back to America and you want this man to pay for your wedding? Am I am I am I losing it? Am I on like a different plane? Cause what's going on? Like honestly, so Andre done walked his ass back in there. I thought he was going whap 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 whap. He didn't do that. Okay, he tell his brother come on. So his brother come out. His brother like what's up? He like tells him to get that shit and get out. His brother like nigga, I can't tell him to do that, bro. Look. We gonna sit here, we gonna try to talk it out, we gonna try to work it out. You the only person who not trying to work it out. Andre then says, you on their side. You're on their side. They've manipulated my brother. My brother is on the side of the opposition. I need to get out of here. Was he just drunk? Because then Elizabeth was like, bro, you the only one who like not trying to get along. And he like, I'm your, I'm your husband. You gonna sit up here and not be on my side? You gonna sit up here and not be on my side? I'm your husband. 
He talking about, you didn't marry your father, you married me. Did you forget that? Then he called the brother fat. Why did he call the brother? He said, I will beat your brother's fat ass. Elizabeth, Elizabeth said, don't call my brother fat. And then, wait, wait, why? Why did Chuck say, now if he had knocked my son out, we would have had to go to the hospital. Charlie said, he would have knocked me out. Now if your father is saying, I think, I think your father knows, Andre would have put the paws on you, okay? Andre would have put them hands right up. <laughs> now you slapped up in a different, in a different location. You don't know what's going on. Anyway, Charlie is full of shit and so is Andre. Why did Colt's badly built beanbag looking ass say that he had flashbacks of Larissa isolating him from his friends, treating him badly? He had PTSD of the whole Larissa situation. Now all y'all sat up here, I don't know if y'all did, but all y'all sat up here and y'all said, Larissa's the one to blame. Larissa's insane. But clearly we all know the one to blame is Deborah and her son Colton. That's probably not his name. Colt will not run after Jess because he wants her to calm down in the interim. Debbie is saying, hey, just move your stuff into my room so she won't come in and beat you up. De uh, Colt then says, I realize that my mother is trying to break up my relationship. So he goes and he runs after Jess where we hear Debbie say, damn as he goes to run after Jess. Jess then miraculously got Vanessa's information from Colt's phone when, just say that TLC gave me the number, okay? Because they wanted drama. TLC wanted drama, so TLC gave her that number, okay? She texts, I don't know if she even texted Vanessa. She te texted Vanessa, Vanessa said, yeah, we be talking every day. She went upstairs, she tried to uh, George Bush him, miss both of the shoes. You gotta hit the person with one or both shoes. So she like, look at this. He like, what? Look at it. You still talking to her? He says, I'm allowed to have friends. And I said, okay, okay, Cole. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, the old switcheroo, the old... The old. God, I hate myself. How old am I? I'm too old to be doing shit like this. I'm too young to be doing shit like this is what I mean. And she, and she, I, I'm able to have friends, Jess. Huh? I'm not allowed to have friends. I'm not allowed to have friends. She said, you know what? She packed her stuff, started packing her stuff. Then he following her. Got on the elevator with her, all squeezed up close next to her. I'm I'm trying to figure out how did you find that body attractive in any way, shape, or form. I hope that their whole relationship was main factor TV drama because there's absolutely no way you were looking at that man talking about. Mm. She go downstairs and he's like, "Just give me five minutes. I was gonna marry you. I was gonna propose to you." She said, "Look, I'm gonna go have sex with another man. You trash, nah, my nigga, trash better than you. Fuck you. You know I'm done. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't particularly know what you want me to say. What do you want me to say? I don't really have nothing to say. I always saw through the bullshit." I knew the type of person Deborah was, and I knew the type of person Colt was. I saw through the bullshit when Larissa was there. I saw through the bullshit. So I'm I don't I'm not shocked they've set their sights on a new target or Debbie has set her sight on somebody she don't like. Like that's not surprising to me. But Debbie need to get slapped up. I refuse and look at me when I say I refuse to believe. That a Swelu, his mama, his sister, I refuse, and Kalani, I refuse to believe that was a real scene. I refuse to believe, first of all, why are they kissing like that? Why did a Swelu get so mad? 
when she said you making out with your mama and he's like no i'm not making out you were okay my son mm. Mm, my son mm. my son. they were they they did a little bit of they did a little bit of kissing okay uh asuelo got mad because kalani was like stop making out with your mother because that's gross Asuelu knew his mama was kissing. He said his mama kissed him right here. But why are you kissing me right here, bro? Kiss me right here, bro. Right here. Right here, bro. Don't don't kiss me right here. That's gross. Anyway, I think Asuelu fucked up because I know he was trying to get the best of the best to impress his family. But getting the best of the best to impress your family made it seem like you had brought that $1,000. I would have brought the thousand dollars and I would have paid for that food out of that that thousand dollars, the gas to come over to your house out of that thousand dollars. I would have paid for everything that I needed out of that thousand dollars while I was there. And then at the end I'd give her the thousand dollars and it would only be three hundred and twenty eight dollars and seventy five cents. Anyway, they sit down and the mother is like, Yo, did you bring my money? And he like Really, the mother said, bro, you got my money. And he like, I got some of it. She like, what's some of it? He like, I got a thousand. She like, a thousand ain't enough. A thousand ain't enough. A thousand ain't enough. His sister, one of his sisters is deaf. So his sister like, hell no, hell no, hell no. One thousand, one hundred ain't enough. One hundred ain't enough. I think I was saying a thousand ain't enough. But knowing these niggas, a thousand ain't enough. So then we start to get into a pickle because his mother says, you know that your parents are still alive. So you're supposed to take care of your parents, even over taking care of your children. Kalani's parents have money. They can take care of the kids. But Kalani is also have Samoan. So wouldn't she need to take care of her parents as well? No? I, okay. Anyway. So, she said, I wanted to send money back home. I wanted to give money to the church. Well, they ain't going to get it. But anyway, I could just do that and just say it's in both of our names. Like, a thousand dollars, honey. A thousand American dollars? Girl, I give you a thousand Monopoly dollars. The fuck? Anyway, his sister, who looks exactly like him, is like, bro, you know that you need to take care of the family. You know that you need to send money. And so Kalani said, well, do you send money back? And she said, that's none of my biz. That's none of your business. And then the mother said, we're asking my son, leave my daughter alone. And I said, no, 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 no. This is manufactured TV drama because there is no, there is, there is no way. And I know people have audacity. So that's why this could be real because people do have audacity. But there is absolutely no way that this woman has said, you know, that our culture is to take care of our parents even before our children, even before our, 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 our husbands, even before our households, even before our wives, even before all of that. And when she said, how much money you send home, you said, no comment? Then he said, look. Me and Kalini, Kalani decided that we weren't going to send all this money. Look at the cameras like this. Okay, y'all. So, y'all like, we on a topsy-turvy adventure. So, maybe if I stand like this as a camera. Nah, because. Anyway, who cares? Asuelu said, look. Me and my wife, we got to do what's best for our family. $100 is best for our family. She said, okay, good. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Anyway, I'm going I'm to I'm go on and get on up out of here. So, his mother and his sisters just left, and Asuelu said, you know what, I, I could really see what Kalani was saying about them, them people only needing me or calling me for money, and I just, this cannot be 100% real. It cannot be. I know it's not 100% real, but that scene could not have been 100% real, because there's absolutely no... But honestly, her reaction, unless that sister is a very good actress, her reaction was like, 
that's none of your business. I'm done, okay? Because I got to review this other show and I don't want my thing to run out. Anyway, if you all like this review, you can like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Brielle. I make beats. I sing souls. If you like what you see, come on along. Bye.